Good evening, everyone, <clears throat> and welcome to this uh, service of evening prayer brought to you by Christ Church Beaurepaire in Beaconsfield, but as always, or mostly, on uh, Wednesday evening from the rectory in Verdun. Today, we are uh, commemorating, I have to look because uh, she's not a well-known person, Hannah Greer Coombe, and I'm sure you've you know her well. <laughs> uh, we'll learn about her a little later in the service. And today we're going to be using the 1962 uh, Canadian Book of Common Prayer, the order for evening prayer. The, and it begins on page 17 of the book, and I think that's 73 in the PDF if you're using the PDF form. <clears throat> page 17. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshipper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Continue with the confession on page 18. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by His infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at His hands, to set forth His most worthy praise, to hear His most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent, and unfeigningly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. In our mouth may sh shall put forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm today is <clears throat> is Psalm 119, one, verses 145 through 152. 119, 145 through 152. And in the 
Book of Common Prayer, it's on page 494 and 495. We'll say it uh, responsibly by half verse. I call with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord, I will keep my statutes. Yea, even unto thee do I call, O help me. And I shall keep thy testimonies. Early in the morning do I cry unto thee. For in thy word I is my trust. Mine eyes forestall the night watches. That I am... I might be occupied in thy words. Hear my voice, my voice, O Lord, according unto thy loving kindness. Quicken me, according as thou art wont. They draw nigh that of mal malice persecute me. And are far from thy law. Thou art nigh at hand, O Lord, and all thy commandments are true. As concerning thy testimonies I have known long since. That thou hast grounded them. Forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and sh ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> the first lesson is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 through 15. 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 15. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him, for all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearances and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who, who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. Here endeth the epistle lesson. Now we say together the Magnificat on page 21. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts, he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. 
But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither must, moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Here endeth the gospel lesson. So first I would like to read the um, spiritual biography of our uh, figure today. Hannah Greer Coombe, religious founder of the Sisterhood of St. John the Divine. The Sisterhood of St. John the Divine is an order of Anglican nuns founded in Canada in 1884 and dedicated, as its rule states, to personal sanctif sanctification and active charity. Today we remember Hannah Greer Coombe, who was its founder and first Mother Superior. Born in Ontario, she married an Englishman and spent most of her married life in Britain. In 1877, her husband's business sent him to Chicago, where he died of cancer the following year. Ms. Coombe remained in Chicago for another three years, then decided to return to England and try her vocation as an Anglican nun. On her way back, she visited her family in Toronto and discovered a group of Anglicans who wished to found a Canadian sisterhood. She accepted their invitation to take the first step and performed her novitiate in the United States. Mother Hannah returned to Toronto in September 1884 and launched the Sisterhood of St. John the Divine. She and her new community initially faced a good deal of harassment, but their work during the real rebellion, serving in the government's field hospitals, overcame these prejudices. The sisters eventually founded a hospital of their own where over half their patients received medical attention free of charge. Later, they established a nursing home for the elderly, one of the first in Canada, and took charge of a school for girls. Mother Hannah guided these enterprises and the everyday life of the sisters with holiness, practical wisdom, and a sense of humor that pierced high-flying pretensions and unseasonable gloom. She retired from the Office of Superior in 1916 and died on Ash Wednesday five years later. In her life, she learned to be a light which kindled righteous deeds in others, and her community continues in the same work to this day. May the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Question that uh, comes up from time to time is, uh, are there such things as Anglican religious orders, nuns or monks? Uh, and the answer is yes, there are, obviously, though uh, it's more complicated than that, <laughs> um, as these things often are, uh, because there weren't for a very long time. Uh, of course, when the, the Church of England broke from the uh, the uh, one Catholic Church of the West uh, under Henry VIII. Uh, Henry VIII uh, disbanded all the religious orders in England. Uh, not that he was uh, religiously motivated, but of course it was politics, and the monasteries had lots of money. They had land, and he wanted the land, and he disbursed... Um, he, he uh, disbanded the monastic orders and gave the land to the nobility, which is why to this day you have uh, these estates, some of these estates th that carry the, uh, the name Abbey. For example, if you know Downton Abbey, you know, there's no nuns there, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, at some point in, the, in you know, 500 years ago, whatever, that land belonged to religious order. Um, so for centuries, there were no Anglican religious orders, uh, and, um, there was perhaps some resistance to, resistance to this, and it was only in the, uh, 19th century with the Oxford movement that, uh, religious orders started to reappear. The Oxford movement, of course, is, uh, um, 
the liturgical revival in the Anglican Church in the late Victor in the Victorian era, um, which restored a lot of things that had been uh, either suppressed or had fallen out of use, like vest like uh, proper uh, Eucharistic vestments, um, uh, certain aspects of our uh, Anglican liturgy that we take for granted, like things like can candles on the altar and all these things. Um, and out of that Oxford movement grew the Anglo-Catholic movement, which is part of uh, the Anglican spectrum. Uh, so, and this, of course, is one example. This uh, Mother Superior Hannah Greer Coombe of a specific monastic order in uh, founded in Canada, in the Anglican tradition. Um, now this is kind of, the, the idea of Anglican religious orders, some people might think, well that isn't that Catholic, or Roman Catholic. And the answer to this question is, uh, which is also the answer to many questions of this nature, uh, the Anglican tradition falls neatly between uh, Roman Catholic and Protestant. And it's often said that the Anglican tradition is both Catholic and Reformed. And we have all the, all the, all the broad spectrum between the two, you know. Uh, there's, there's the more evangelical uh, Protestant side of Anglicanism, and then there's the Anglo-Catholic side of of Anglicanism and everything in between, which gives us our, our wonderful uh, diversity of uh, liturgical practice and uh, very, makes our tradition very tolerant and broad, uh, tolerant and broad one. So things that some people I think are Catholic, like religious orders or even uh, uh, the Hail Mary, the, 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 the Hail Mary prayer, I, we, we sang a hymn last Sunday that uh, the chorus is Hail Mary, Hail Mary, Hail Mary full of grace. And uh, someone asked me about it, or, or commented on it, and, uh, you know, do Anglicans do that? Well, first of all, the Hail Mary prayer is straight out of the Bible. I mean, it's right in Luke. You can read it as like, Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the, word, the fruit of thy womb. That's straight out of Luke. So there's that. But also, she is the, uh, the, 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 the God-bearer, as, as we traditionally say. She brought Christ into the world, so we give her a place of, uh, of honor. Other things like, you know, our vestments... Um, and, and many other aspects of our tradition might look Catholic to some people, but we are a blended tradition that, uh, as Queen Elizabeth I uh, said, is the middle way. So yes, now we do have Anglican religious, religious orders. I even know... Um, someone who uh, are uh, uh, priests at our cathedral, Deb Deborah, Reverend Deborah, Deborah Meister, who just a uh, few months ago took uh, religious order orders in the Anglican Church. So yeah, it's not as well known as in the Catholic Church, but it exists. Now looking at our uh, reading today <clears throat> from Matthew, this famous passage about don't store up for yourself treasures on earth, but rather treasures in heaven. I think the way we kind of think about this passage is that um, don't strive for wealth and material possession in this life, but rather aim for heaven meaning the world to come after we die. And that's certainly one way of reading it, but I think that's a bit too, uh, too uh, dualistic in that it kind of puts, pushes everything to 
the other the other life and it, and takes us away from what we're living right now and if we kind of look at this in the context of what Jesus taught when he's talking about heaven the kingdom of heaven he talks about the kingdom of heaven in Matthew and other parts of the gospel he's talked about the kingdom of God so it's the same thing kingdom of God kingdom of heaven it's clear that Jesus is not just talking about the afterlife. That's part of it. But it's also something that's right here already. You know, the kingdom of the kingdom of God is in your midst or the kingdom of God is within you even. Uh, different uh, readings of that. So this is not about, you know, here and now versus the great the great beyond. But heaven is a state of being. And a state of being that we can live in in this life and which continues into eternity. It's not you know, this versus that, but rather heaven begins now. The kingdom of God is with us now. So if we take it in that context, this is about how, uh, not about where we are but rather how we relate to the world where our focus is are we focusing on material wealth material possessions that as pointed out in the gospel can be are subject to corruption uh, uh, to you know uh, destruction they don't last you know any you know money possessions they're all unstable but store up yourselves treasure, treasure in heaven is rather not just about, you know, after we die, but rather concentrating on, focusing on the things that matter here, that matter even here and now. The things that are intangible and that last and really matter. Love, our relationships and caring for those in need as, as our uh, example today. So we shouldn't think about this just in terms of this life versus after death, but rather, where do we place our emphasis in our life now? Is it on, is it on the material? Or is it on those things that last? The things of God, the things of, of our soul. And if we focus on those things here and now, we are already living in the kingdom of heaven, even on this side of eternity. Amen. Now we will have our hymn, which is Come and Praise for 435, Take My Life and Let It Be.
continue with the creed on page 22. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, in the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Let us pray. Eternal God, you clothe your servant Hannah with the habit of prayer and the robe of wisdom to guide her sisters in this nation in the ways of holiness and the works of mercy and love. Deliver us, we pray, from an inordinate love of this world, that we may be freed for the worship of your name and for deeds that reveal your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And as it, uh, as the Queen celebrated her uh, 70th anniversary of accession to the throne, I will include one of the prayers for Her Majesty. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, the Parliaments of this Commonwealth, and all who are set in authority under her that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace to the honor of thy holy name and the good of thy church and people, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Awesome. Amen. Now I invite you to submit your request for intercessory prayer as we pray together. Type, Please type in the comment section. God of healing and God of love. We lift up to you all of the human family as we struggle through this global pandemic and we struggle to find ways to emerge from it and to return to some sort of normalcy, but we ask that we may learn from for this experience and work together to build a more just more just society we pray for all who are sick of covid sick with covid we pray for all those in the medical profession that continue to be stressed and burdened by 
by the number of cases. And we pray for all those who are distributing vaccines that we may reach people in all countries around the world. God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. We are praying for all churches in the township as they gear up for 13 annual general vestry meetings. Gracious God, we pray for, for all of our parishes in the Diocese of Montreal, especially as we go into annual vestry, as our parish goes into annual vestry in a few weeks and all those that are preparing to, to discuss the business of the, the upcoming year. We pray for wisdom and guidance. And a spirit of cooperation and, and a spirit of cooperation and focus on what really matters in our churches. God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the needs of our parish, of our friends and families. We pray for, pray for those who are sick, those who are afflicted in mind, body, or spirit, and those who are facing other types of challenges. We pray for Irene, for Jane, for Donna, Karen, for Sandy, for Ingrid and Gordon and Trish, for Eleanor, and all those in need this time. We pray for all who have died. We pray especially for Cheryl. We commend her soul to your loving embrace. We pray for all who have died, especially those who have died today, wherever in the world. May light perpetual shine upon them and may they rest in peace. God of love and mercy. As we open, as our churches reopen or prepare to reopen for in-person worship, we pray for, for guidance. We also pray for, for prudence, but also we pray that we may, all of our members may be motivated to return to worship when they feel ready, that we may rebuild our communities and, and the ties that bind us together. God of love and mercy. We pray for all those in authority, for Elizabeth, our queen, for Justin, our Prime Minister, for Francois, our Premier, for our Mayors, and especially now we pray for the, the goings-on in Ottawa with this, with this uh, protest movement. We pray for calm, we pray for a spirit of of forbearance and concern for the common good and I pray for we pray for an end to selfishness and egotism and we pray that we may come together as a country 
to emerge from this from this pandemic in a way that is safe for all. God of love and mercy. Gracious God, we lift up to you all these, these intentions that we have spoken, that we have written, or that we have whispered silently in our hearts. All this we ask in Christ's holy name. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petition of thy servants, as mo may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer this evening. Our service continues uh, online every Wednesday at 7 on, the, on our Facebook page and on the website. Big news this week. In-person worship is coming back this, this, this Sunday. Yay. At least at Christ Church, it's coming back. Uh, 10 o'clock. Holy Communion, we will be gathering in the church, but we'll still broadcast online, and that will continue indefinitely. Uh, the Wednesday service will continue online, with the exception of Ash Wednesday, which is coming up in about three weeks, I think. That, God willing, will be an in-person service with, hopefully, imposition uh, of ashes. We haven't had one of those in quite a while. So I hope to see you, uh, as many of you as possible, uh, this Sunday. Um, of course, no pressure if you're not ready to, to come back in person. Please join us online, but uh, if you're ready to come back to church, we would love to see you this Sunday. And you can send us your content. Yes. Uh, in spite of the uh, the communication that went, went out last week in our communique that singing congregational singing will not be allowed, uh, that was uh, misinformation and actually a correction came from the diocese just moments after that went out and congregational singing will be allowed starting uh, with our first in-person service this Sunday, of course. Mask must always be worn uh, throughout the service, uh, procedural masks, and uh, vaccine passports are required. So just like, just like before we close down at the end of the year, vaccine passports uh, are required. It's not my rule, it's the government's rule, so please come with your, your uh, proof of vaccination. Don't want anyone to be turned away. And with that, I wish you a uh, blessed rest of the week and a good night.